Hello, and welcome to the short little presentation here on how CA Early Engagement Modeler Release RA2 can support your Microsoft SQL Azure environment. What we're going to do is we're going to jump right into the tool and have a very short presentation on how you can do this. And now you should see the uh, SQL Azure connection to a website on this page. And you'll notice that the, when you, we're not really going to talk about how you make the technical connection into the Azure environment, but uh, that's a little bit outside the scope of this presentation. But what I will do here is talk a little bit about setting up your uh, database in order for Erwin to be able to communicate directly to the Azure cloud. There's a tab here called sub Subscriptions. Uh, what you do is in the Azure environment, you establish a subscription, and within specific subscriptions, uh, you have a, a server assigned to it, and then we have the databases that are associated to that server. Okay? So what we're gonna, going to do here, like we would in any kind of database, when you work with Erwin, you create the name of the database in your uh, DBMS environment, in this platform, it's uh, SQL Azure. So we're going to have, go ahead and go to the server, and we're going to create a new database name in order to push information into this uh, schema information into this database. So I'll just call this publication, and we'll take the defaults here, but uh, there's different options within SQL Azure in terms of having a, a web edition or a business edition, which gives you a little bit more capability on the business edition. And you can uh, control the number of gigabytes that you want to have on this particular database. We'll just take those defaults and click OK. And now we have a new database in the environment. I have a publication database. And now we want to go into the Erwin environment and be able to push that particular database over uh, a database from our environment using Erwin on your desktop and push it over to the cloud environment. So to do that, for our example here, we're going to pull a database out of SQL Server, convert it to Azure, and push it out to the Azure environment. And I'll show you how simple that is. So let's go ahead to go to the reverse engineering process. And we'll reverse engineer to a logical physical. And we need to point to my instance of SQL Server 2008. And the next diagram here, dialog here, we'll just take the defaults. And we need to connect to Windows, to Window Authentication, rather, to SQL Server 2008. And we'll point to the publications database called PUBS on this server using SQL Server negative connection. So we'll go ahead and connect to it now. And now we have that database in memory with all the parameters that enable you to generate DDL syntax for SQL Server. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to go to the Actions menu, and we're going to change the target database from SQL Server to SQL Azure. And it's as simple as doing that to change it. Now we need to be able to change Erwin's connection dialog to be able to communicate to the uh, the web-based uh, machine over through the network onto the Azure Cloud. So again, we'll go to the Actions menu, and we'll click on Database Connection, and we need to disconnect from the database that we were connected to, and we need to specify that we want to connect to a SQL Azure environment. I'm going to cheat a little bit just to put in the parameters here real quick. With SQL Azure, sometimes you may need to, and it primarily depends on your contract with the cloud environment that you're working with. In some cases, you need to append the user ID with the machine name, all right, followed by the at sign. Uh, you see right here, we have the your Irwin user as uh, C-A-D-O-D Irwin, and then we have the at sign, and then we have the server name on the cloud side appended to it. That's just to get the proper connection through, the, through your network into the cloud. And here we're going to use the SQL Server negative connection again. And here's the full path name to get to the server on the cloud platform. And we want to push all this information over to the publication database on that platform. So we'll just click on the connect button. And I can put in my password. It might help if I do that. So let me just copy it from another area and place it right here into the Windows area and click the connection button. Now we have the connectivity to the Azure cloud directly from this PC over the network to the Azure environment. Now we can go ahead and go to the Actions menu and click on our forward engineering process. 
to generate this uh, syntax. Keep in mind now that this syntax is now being generated for Azure, not for SQL Server. And we can preview it here real quick just to show it to you. All this syntax has been converted to the Azure syntax nomenclature, what's required for SQL Azure. A few differences with Microsoft SQL Server and SQL Azure. There are a few differences between the two DBMSs, and those are explained in the help facility within Erwin to help you with that. Okay? So now we'll just click on the Generate button, and now we'll connect it to the cloud environment through that Erwin connection, and it's actually populating the publication database on the cloud to the uh, with this, this schema definition. As you can see that the execution was successful, so we can click OK. And now we can jump over to the cloud environment now and look at the publication database that we just created. And let's click on the Manage button to be able to look at the details of what we established inside that database. And we'll go to the publication database. I'll use the same user ID I used for uh, the Erwin connection and the same password. And now we're connecting to the details to look at all the information about publication database, what it now contains. So let's look at the, uh, go down the left frame here and click on the design option. And that will open up all the tables that were created through the SQL that we just, the DDL syntax that we just pushed in through Erwin. All the information is available here. And we can click on the jobs button and click on the edit button rather on the jobs table and look at all the columns that were included uh, as we created the syntax as we instantiated the schema definition. So that's how easy it is. You simply go to your Erwin environment, reverse engineer a database. I gave the example of SQL Server to SQL Azure, but you can also do that with any database. Keep in mind, however, that some of the syntax requirements in SQL Azure are a little bit different than even SQL Server 2008, and also either in Oracle DB2 or Teradata or whichever, what have you. And uh, so you need to go to the model target for Azure and verify that uh, all these structures are, uh, all these parameters for these particular objects in SQL Azure are supported properly in terms of the SQL Azure environment. So that's how easy it is. I can give you a real quick example of, connect, of changing another database, another uh, schema, another model, if you will. I can open up this model right here. And this model contains all the information and the target, if you look on the lower right-hand corner, is for DB2 for ZOS 9.1. Okay? And you can go to the Actions menu again and simply convert the target database if you have the physical side of the diagram open. You can go to the Actions menu and click on the target database and change it to SQL Azure. Now, notice also that some of the data types like in DB2, Oracle, or other types of databases, may not map correctly into the Azure environment. So you may need to use Erwin's data type mapping uh, capability to map the column data types from one database, DBMS product, into the Azure environment. So that way you can uh, clean all that stuff up um, once you create the Azure uh, image of the model. And then again, you go to the database and um, to the Azure environment, create and instantiate the database name, and then you can go to the action menu and, and change the database connection and forward engineer in the same way I showed you with SQL Server. So that's how easy it is to actually convert some data models based on the DBMS your targets you're working with on premise. You can convert and select which databases you want to pull over to your cloud environment very easily and manage both areas, both on premise and in the cloud manage that information through whirlwind. And I'd like to thank you for your attention now, and I hope you had a good presentation here and learned a little bit about being able to connect to an Azure environment and leverage Erwin right from your desktop through the cloud into the Azure space.